Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Adventures. Today, my good buddy, the Smoking Ape, and I are going to go through how to set up a, a Tiny SA Ultra for checking your HT. Now, this is a video from a stream that we did about two weeks ago. So stick around, let's have a show us how to do this. I wanted to learn something about the uh, the Tiny SA and that, those type of little meters, and who else better? Like, I mean, everybody else is <laughs> tapped into this this V smoking Abe. So I figure oh, I work with this guy. I should uh, I should get him to show me how to do this stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> we're going to have our hands full, I think, with just the two of us. Um, Abe's going to show me how to use this thing. Uh, I have played with it just a little bit. I mean, it's turned on. He's right talking now, about so. the tiny SA he played with. The tiny SA guys, yeah. Watch it now. It's I've been I I really like my regular antenna antenna testers because they're I'm used to them. I mean, they're easy for me. But I do know that you can do more with these type of uh, basically oscilloscope type things like the tiny the tiny SA and stuff. So I'm I'm trying to broaden my horizons here, and, and Ape is gonna, <laughs> Ape's going to hate it because he's going to have to teach me some. That's all right. I mean, the, <clears throat> the thing is, is like when I got the Nano VNA a long time ago, uh, I bought it because I needed an antenna analyzer, and it was cheap. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They and I, I bought it strictly because it was cheap, and I got it, and I turned it on, and you get all those goofy traces and everything on there, and I had no idea what any of it meant. I'm like, well, Jesus, this is going to be impossible, and... I just started playing with it, playing with it, and then um, going on the internet and reading about them because there wasn't there wasn't really any um, YouTube videos on it either. And then the, when the Tiny SA came out, I was like, "Oh damn, this thing's going to be awesome!" And so I, I bought one, and I literally didn't take it out of the box for probably the first six months that I had it because I was like, "I don't know anything about these things. I don't know how to operate it. I I'd probably end up breaking it or messing it up and stuff like that." And then slowly over time, I just started messing with it more and more and more, and um, Right. So, you know, Ape is the guy that kind of knows these things. And so that's where we're, we're going to the expert, at least in the ham radio world. I'm sure there's people <laughs> in other worlds that may know more than Ape, but, yeah. but I don't know any of those guys. So that's the way it goes. So where, where do we want to start on this thing? Do we, I'll, I've got a overhead shot of this. Do we want to just uh, maybe calibrate it? Huh? Let me switch it over to that one. Yeah. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to do the self test, and then we do the level calibration. Okay. Um, let me get you a yes. little bit bigger if I can figure out how to do this. I, oh, I can. Uh, we normally see, have we normally have Randy is, for this. This is the first radio we're going to test. This is a Bofang, and I'm pretty sure this is an old Bofang that's uh, pretty dirty. I'm sure. All right. So where we're going to go on the menu? <clears throat> so go into the menu, and then you want to go into config which is the second up from the bottom. Got it. Okay. All right. And then in there at the top, the second one down should say self-test. So you want to go ahead and hit that. All right. And I do have the the, the cords hooked together from side to side, top to bottom. <clears throat> so one of the things is that if you do get a fake tiny SA, it'll fail the self-test. Now, as of a couple of weeks ago, the designer of this said that they haven't seen any known fake ultras on the market, but you know, that just means they haven't caught them yet. And then well, um, that's something I wanted to bring up. And I did talk to Abe before I bought one to find out where to get one. And I'll leave that. I don't, it's not in the description right now, but I will add it later of where I bought mine off of AliExpress. And that was one of the places they said to get it. Yeah, it's like 20, 30 bucks cheaper to get it off AliExpress. So uh, just go ahead and touch the screen because the self-test is done at this point. All right. Here we go. All right, and then um, what you want to do is you want to go back into the menu. And then yeah. you want to go to config. And then you want to do the level calibration, which is the third one down. Okay. And then just pick the uh, first one where it says uh, 100 to 5.34 and then hit uh, calibrate. So it's pretty self-explanatory there. Most of it, once you kind of know what yeah, it it's, is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So the top port is injecting signals that are supposed to be of a particular value. So then the bottom port, when it detects those signals, it adjusts itself to what they're supposed to be. So that way... If it's off by two and a half dB or something like that, when you use your radio to test, it'll have already adjusted for the two and two two and a half dB difference. 
Okay. So that's pretty good because the the other one that you get, the, the one you sent me, you have to put different uh, things in to test it. And this one does everything on board. <clears throat> Yeah, so the the um, the other one works off of reflected signals, and um, it does also do a through test. But oh. so that's why you have to use those calibration standards on there. And like right now, in the top left hand corner of your screen, the the text is in red, and so that right. will go that that'll go green once we once the oh, calibration is done. done. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now it says it's done. So just touch the screen anywhere, and you should, we should be good to go. Just say it's done. Yeah, complete. All right. So now, now it's white. So the, now at the top of it, you can see that it, the screen's yeah. white. I do see it. Yeah. So right. what we want to what we want to do now is take your radio, and you probably have the attenuator already connected to the radio. So disconnect. Not that one. The other one. The, the top. I'm disconnect take them the both top. off. I've got a different. Okay. Uh, oh right, right. Because different... you got a different cable. This goes to the bottom one, right? Yeah. That's it says RF. Yeah, it says RF. So that kind of makes sense, guys. Well, with the with the first generation, depending upon the frequency you were testing, you would put it in different ones. The Yalta is so much nicer than the original. I'm just <clears throat> so to set this up. So we turn the radio on now. You can, but we have to set. We also have to set up the. Okay, um, let's do that then. The tiny SA. So go back into your menu. <clears throat> okay. All right, so um, you want to hit back, so you want to go to the top menu. All right. And then the first thing we're going to do is you want to go into measure, and we're going to pick the option or the feature for um, harmonic. So it should be the top in there. It should say harmonic. <clears throat> now, this changed uh, with the newer firmware. So when you took yours out of the box and we're playing around with it, I was like, what are you looking at? So that's when I did my firmware right. update video. And so we're going to test on 146. Let's go 146.52 and then hit the M for megahertz. <clears throat> Sometimes people hit the times one and that'll actually do kilohertz and it'll look all goofy. Now it's asking you for a span. And what the span does is it basically divides your screen into eight separate sections. So you can look oh. at each harmonic range separately. Um, it's probably more for looking at like uh, harmonics on transmit when you're looking at like your inner uh, third order intercept and harmonic distortion of your signal. But this is, we're doing a little bit of a different harmonics test. But I would just do 146.52 megahertz again. Meg and Meg. Him. Yep. All right. So I did that right when I was playing with it once before. So Yeah. <clears throat> so now you want to turn your menu on again. We spent a lot of time in the menu. We do. And then you want to hit level in there. Right. Now your attenuator is a 40 dB attenuator. So we want to account for that. Yes. So there's okay. an option called external gain and you want to hit that. It's like right in the middle. There you go. And then do negative 40 times one. And we do this because whatever readings come onto the uh, screen, we want to add 40 dB to that to account for the negative 40 that we're attenuating with that big ass attenuator. Gotcha. <clears throat> and now the last thing we want to do is uh, go back into the menu one last time. And you want to go back. And then you want to pick display. And then you have an option there called draw line. It's like the fourth one down. And then just do negative 16.02 times one. So negative, there you go. 16.2. 0.02. Yeah. And then times one. Set this line here. Yeah, but for whatever reason, it's not. It it doesn't look like it's at the right at the right level. But that's all right. Like that's that looks like it's at zero. <clears throat> In any event, turn the radio on and turn it on one four six five two. All right. And I am on so, low power. I think right now. You want me to check that, or does it matter? It doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> all right. So you want to key that thing up? All right. Here we go.
Hopefully no no, no uh, sparks or nothing. I'll change. Sorry guys. Unfortunately the cable is kind of going to go where it wants to go. So yeah, it's, it's settling itself down. <clears throat> so if you hit the menu real quick, and then you can hit pause sweep, it's at the top. Now there's two different things. You can pause this entire screen. Now you can unkey the radio. Now I can unkey. Okay. <clears throat> so you, you can pause it or you can freeze the trace. So they're, they're two, actually two different things. Right. Um, but th they, it, it's fine. So now just, just, um, Tap outside that menu, and that, that'll go away. Okay. And so, if you take a look at this, it it looks like it's actually it looks actually looks like it's clean. <clears throat> we don't have that uh, that line on there. Doesn't look too good, but I can do some math on there. So your top peak is it's um, was it thirty six point five? All right, 36, and then marker thirty six point nine. Okay, it's thirty six point nine. So if I go 36.9 minus, what is that 50.5 uh, dBC? Is that what that says? For marker number two? Yeah. <clears throat> so like you would say, okay, that, that one is 40 dB down. So it's clean. But actually that spike on one, two, if you do the math, it's at negative 13.6 and it needs to be a negative 16.2. So that radio is, uh, it's, it's dirty. This thing's old. It's an old bow thing. Well, that was the A, right? That's like the second, the second generation. They did UV five R, then yes. UV five R A. This is the fancier looking one with the chrome grill on it. Yeah. Now that that uh, marker number three, that one would be that one would be good because it's mm -hmm. negative fifty six down, and that would give it enough to be below the negative sixteen point two. So there's two parts to the rule for these HTs, and that second spur would cause that to be a fail. All right. Oh, kind of looks sucks. like because of the line, it looks good, but it's not right. Okay. So, all right. So now you got to go back and you got to unpause it. Yeah, it's not that bad there, Lightning Lee. It was pretty close. I mean, for right for an old one. It's been around. <laughs> Random wire saying last resort, blame the firmware. That's the best way to do it, right? That's right. <laughs> 